When it comes to microscopic animals, tardigrades might be the most famous. Sorry. This fame is well deserved, since not only are they tiny, chubby, and adorable, they're also the most impressive survivors in the animal kingdom. We've seen a lot of tough guys in this series so far, from single-celled archaea that reproduce in boiling water, to nematode worms that swim happily in a jar of acid. These are two examples of extremophiles, organisms that live in conditions that would be deadly to most other forms of life. Tardigrades are often placed in the category of extremophilic, since they've evolved the ability to survive in situations that even the burliest nematode couldn't handle. But before I get too ahead of myself, what is a tardigrade? What makes them tough enough to survive such extraordinary conditions? And is it correct to refer to them as extremophiles? We'll find the answer to all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. Tardigrades were first described in 1773 by German pastor Johann August Ephraim Goes, who wrote, Strange is this little animal, because of its exceptional and strange morphology, and because it closely resembles a bear in miniature. That is the reason why I decided to call it Little Water Bear. That guy had a pretty cool accent. Now, I don't know if Pastor Goes had ever actually seen a bear before, because... Really? He was right about their exceptional and strange morphology, though, as tardigrades are unusually complex for their size. Most tardigrades are too small to see without a microscope, the largest species reaching just over a millimeter long. They have eight stubby legs, two photoreceptive cells that function like eyes, and piercing mouthparts for sucking the juices out of plants and bacteria. You know, like a bear. They can be found almost anywhere that moisture exists and many species are common in patches of wet moss, where they crawl amongst the tiny foliage, earning them the nickname Moss Piglets. If I ever start a band, it will be called Jason and the Moss Piglets. Now let's get to the business at hand. How do tardigrades survive such a wide range of extreme environmental conditions? Let's start by looking at a tardigrade in an ideal situation, a patch of wet moss a perfect place for an active tardigrade to move, eat, grow, and reproduce. But let's say there's a heat wave and all the moisture evaporates. What's a teeny tiny moss piglet to do? If you watched my video on rotifers, you might remember the term cryptobiosis, a state of deep sleep where metabolism slows down to an almost imperceptible level. Like rotifers, tardigrades undergo cryptobiosis when environmental conditions become unfavorable but the way that they do it is pretty damn insane. Like all living organisms, a tardigrade's body is mostly water. To enter cryptobiosis, they discard up to 97% of the water in their body and shrivel into what is effectively a lump of dry cells called a ton. The metabolic activity of a ton is about 0.01% that of an active tardigrade. They don't eat, they don't drink, and they certainly don't reproduce. Tardigrades can remain in this state for decades, and when moisture levels return to a survivable degree, the ton rehydrates and returns to life as usual. A tardigrade in the ton state is about as indestructible as a life form can get, and not just against dehydration. A ton is highly resistant to extreme cold, radiation, pressure, and chemical toxins, among other inconveniences. In lab experiments, Tardigrades have shown the ability to survive 20 hours at negative 273 degrees Celsius. For context, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius is the lowest temperature that's physically possible. They've also survived temperatures as hot as 150 degrees Celsius. Pressure equal to 6,000 atmospheres, deadly levels of carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide, ionizing radiation, gamma radiation, ultraviolet radiation, and of course, the vacuum of outer space. These are conditions that no other animal could hope to survive, which is why astrobiologists are so interested in studying them. After all, 
The chemical processes that keep tardigrades alive in the Tun state could be the same ones that keep alien animals alive on inhospitable planets. With that said, at the risk of sounding incredibly nitpicky, tardigrades are not technically extremophiles. No, I know, I know, I'm sorry, but hear me out. An extremophile is an organism that undergoes optimal growth, development, and reproduction in extreme environmental conditions. An example of this is a microbe called Pyrococcus furiosus, a member of the domain Archaea that has an optimal growth temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. At 100 degrees Celsius, a tardigrade would be technically alive in its tun state, but not able to grow, eat, or breed. Tardigrades don't thrive in extreme conditions. They survive them. The tun state is not a fun state. It's more of a in-case-of-emergency break-glass situation. If it was up to a tardigrade, they'd much prefer a bed of wet moss to the cold vacuum of space. But I bet it's nice to have that option available. Next week, we meet the largest and most diverse animal phylum on planet Earth. Ancient creatures who currently account for over 80% of known animal species. The first animals to walk on land. The first to defy gravity and evolve the power of flight. We rely on them for most of our food, and so does the entire animal kingdom. It's their world. We're just living in it. The arthropods. Phylum arthropoda. I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited? Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on whatever. I'll see you next week, most likely covered in bugs. But until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.